Today we're going to talk a little bit about open data, about where open data is today and how we think we can help take open data to the next level. So over the last few years we've seen a huge amount of data being made available uh, from all levels of government but also from not-for-profits and other organisations and this has huge potential to change people's lives in really meaningful ways through better decision making uh, but also by combining data from different sources and that allows us to start finding insights that we would never have uncovered that otherwise. And there's clearly been a lot of work to get to where we are today, but sometimes when I look at some of the data that's becoming available, it feels a bit like we're at version 1.0 at the moment. And I want to talk about how we can build on the great work that's been done so far to really take it to the next level. Let's take a look at an example. So recently I was looking at the UK's uh, government open data portal and I noticed this excellent road safety data set. This is a record of every road traffic accident in Great Britain since 1979. Uh, so clearly a fantastic resource and there's all sorts of questions you might want to start asking of this data. But before you can do anything with this, you need to overcome a few challenges. Because what's being released is really just a raw dump of the data. And this is something you see with a lot of data releases. It's all here, but anyone who wants to use it needs to do some work first. So the first problem you're going to have if you want to do something with this data is just getting the files. I mean, there's over two and a half gigabytes of files here, uh, and the data split across a lot of different files that you have to start piecing back together before you can start asking questions. Also, if you try to open any of these files in a tool like Microsoft Excel, this happens. So you really need specialist tools to work with this data, uh, you need special skills, and you need to spend some time putting the data together before you can start working with it. So at uh, Space Time Research, we think that the next stage of open data is really about lowering the barrier to entry, about not just providing dumps of the data, but also giving people tools that they can use to start working with that data straight away. Our web dissemination tool, SuperWeb2, is designed to make it easy to share large volumes of data with whatever audience you need to reach. It runs entirely in a browser, so your users don't need any special tools uh, to start working with your data, just the web browser that they already have. So to demonstrate how we can add value, I took the raw dump of the road safety data from the UK Open Data Portal and I loaded it into our platform so you can see the difference between the two methods of sharing that data. So as you can see here, I've applied a bit of branding to our product to make it match the style of the UK Open Data Portal. Uh, out of the box, what you get with SuperWeb2 is very much a blank canvas but it's uh, very easy to customise so that it blends in seamlessly with the look and feel of the rest of your website. What we're looking at here is the homepage of SuperWeb2. Here on the right you have an information area. You can pretty much add whatever content you like here, uh, but one really good way to use this area is to make it into a bit of a dashboarding component. As you can see here, I've included some background information about the data set, and then below that I've embedded a couple of key charts. And what we also have here is a mechanism where you can drill down into the data direct from the chart uh, to get straight to the table that was used to build that chart and then start customizing it and asking your own questions. So the first one I've got here shows fatalities over time and this is a bit of a good news story. Uh, they've been dropping steadily with a couple of points where they drop more quickly so that's something that might get people interested in looking at that in more detail. Here's another chart showing accidents by vehicle type Obviously cars have the most accidents because there are more of them, but if I take cars out of the graph for a second, you can see something interesting going on with motorbikes. So there's a 10-year period starting in the early 80s where motorbike accidents started dropping dramatically. So what was going on there? Something that you might want to dig into in a little bit more detail. So we've got this button here up on the top right that says explore the data. And what that allows you to do is to click straight through to the table that was used to build this visualization. So over here on the left, we've got the customized table section where you can see all the other variables that are available in this data set. And making change to that query is really just a simple matter of dragging and dropping those variables onto the table. For example, let's say I'm interested in the time of day when accidents occurred. I could drag that across and just drop that on the table. You can also drag and drop variables around within the table. And I can drag them off to the trash uh, to remove them from the query.
if I find something interesting, I can click into graph view to see a visualization. And I can choose from the different options here on the left to see different types of graph. Another area where we really add value is around confidentiality and privacy. So when you release a raw dump of data, there's really no sophisticated way to confidentialize that. You're reduced to basically removing personal information. Beyond that, you might also need to remove useful data. So one aspect of this data set that I'd be interested in exploring would be related to drink driving. And they do release some data on that. So you've got this breath test results data set. You've also got some coroner's data with blood alcohol levels, levels matched up to fatalities. But because this has been released as a raw data dump, all the links between those data sets and the accident data sets have been removed, and I'm assuming that is for privacy reasons. On the other hand, if you release this through a tool like SuperWeb2, we have sophisticated confidentiality protections built right into the solution. So we have a system called Perturbation that's designed to allow you to release as much data as possible and keep it as useful as possible without compromising privacy and confidentiality. So you can keep those links. I mean, in this case, you can link up accidents and blood alcohol levels of fatalities without any risk that an individual is going to be identified. One final thing that I'd like to show you, we also have a mapping capability that's built into the solution. So if your data has a geographical component to it, uh, users can visualize the results of their queries on a map. And those maps are built up on the fly. So we automatically stitch the query results and the geography together and then display that on a, a geographical map. In this case, uh, this data set has a variable called accident location. So if I drag that into the table, you can see that it's modeled as a hierarchy starting at the country level. But I can drill down in the table into a specific geographical area. And then when I've found what I'm interested in, I can click over to map view and it will show those results on the map. You can also build up queries from within the map itself. So here I've got a particular subset of the geography displayed, but maybe I'm interested in this area over here. So I can just draw a box on the map and it'll add those areas to the query and that actually gets add to, added to the table as well. So I hope this has given you a bit of an idea of how tools like SuperWeb2 can add value when sharing data. It's a tool that allows anyone to start working with your data right away just by dragging and dropping variables that they're interested to build up queries and start looking for insights. If you do want to know more, please check out our website at spacetimeresearch.com and get in touch with us today and we can talk about how we can help you disseminate your data to whatever audience you need to reach.